Celebrities like Akon play an outsized role in the public imagination. Their presence and media influence have the power to bring wider attention to important issues. But with the power of celebrity comes the responsibility to support just causes, or at the very least, avoid supporting evil and exploitative causes. Page Six reported, Akon's former business partner, Devin Stevens, filed a lawsuit against the singer, accusing the Don't Matter artist of not paying him the total amount of $750,000 from a 2018 settlement agreement between the two and three million in royalties. Stevens is a music executive who worked with other artists like Destiny's Child, Usher, Jay-Z, Tony Braxton, and TLC, claims he and Akon came to an agreement in which Stevens would receive $3.25 million over the span of four years from the singer. Akon supposedly failed to pay the final installment that Stevens was still owed, which amounted to the sum of $750,000. Apparently, this isn't a new problem between the two as it's been an ongoing issue in the relationship between Akon and Stevens. Stevens accused Akon, his former business partner, of spending the better part of a decade finding every way possible to avoid giving him the money that's owed to him in the contract. Akon has spent the better part of a decade frustrating Stevens' attempts to obtain large amounts of money, which Akon unambiguously promised in contracts to pay Stevens, court docs state. It stated in the court documents that Stevens said that Akon believes he shouldn't be required to pay Stevens over 20% because he's now working for BMG Records, which Akon has argued isn't a high up label, which Stevens argued against. Stevens countered with a statement saying the singer intentionally breached his contract with Stevens when he left to go to BMG Records. Akon also came under a lot of heat that he felt famous and the rich go through more issues than the poor, a statement that he later stood behind, saying he was speaking from his own personal experience. I'm having more problems successfully dealing with all that comes with success than I had when I was poor, he said. I was actually happier when I was poor. Everyone has their own experiences for sure, and that one was Akon's, but hopefully he learned to watch how he words things in the future to avoid further backlash. Another former business partner of Akon's argues in recently filed court documents that the lonely artist Senegal City plans can be likened to a Ponzi scheme. From a report from Page Six, Devin Stevens, who was the same man who sued Akon for millions, asked the judge to freeze the singer's assets until the case is resolved and the truth was revealed. In related court docs from March, Upfront Megatainment Inc. and Stevens argued that Akon is flagrantly breaching two separate contractual promises that were part of a prior settlement agreement. Also, in an affidavit that stated March 7, it's argued that both the Acon City and Acoin Ventures have, in the professional opinion, red flags associated with business-based schemes. In short, Stevens is arguing that having the singer's assets frozen would assist in getting Stevens the money he says he's owed from Acon, including royalties. He pushed to freeze Akon's money until the judgment would be reached for the $4 million lawsuit Stevens filed against Akon in 2021. Stevens believed that Akon's assets had to be withheld to ensure that he would receive his money that was passed due to him. According to Stevens' lawyer, Jeffrey Movit, this could potentially include Akon's Wakanda-inspired city, an oceanfront village in his homeland of Senegal, slated to run on his Acoin cryptocurrency. The project is estimated to cost $6 billion to finish its production. According to the findings of the retired federal special agent Scott Thomason, the potential foundation of Akon City includes many of the trademark characteristics known as red flags of fraudulent business ventures such as Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes. Movit, who described Akon's plans for the village as broken promises, stated that the singer has provided almost no transparency about who is investing in Akon City or how it will be purportedly built. Therefore, Akon City is likely a scam. In response to the findings and claims against Akon and his city, a rep for Akon denied Stevens' accusation of Akon City being a scam. Mr. Stevens' allegations about Akon City and Akon's business ventures are not based on any evidence. The rep continued, they are nothing but innuendo and speculation, made by someone who had a claim against Akon dismissed, referring to a previous claim against Akon by Stevens that was tossed out. Akon is proud of the efforts he is undertaking to create opportunities for his homeland in Senegal. 
The statement said of the true intent behind the building of Akon City. A rep for Akon, in a statement to Page Six, said that the claims about his ventures are not based on any evidence, arguing that they are instead inspired by a previously dismissed claim in connection with the allegations. They are nothing but innuendo and speculation made by someone who had a claim against Akon dismissed, the rep said, adding that Akon is proud of the work he's doing for Senegal. Another scandal to hit Akon was of high moral value. Speaking with TMZ Hip Hop, the singer disputed Knight's claim, accusing him of underage girls. I need to make it very clear that I absolutely deny these outrageous, false, and disgusting claims Suge Knight made on his podcast about me, Akon said. I've never called, received, or had any contact with Suge Knight since he has been incarcerated. My voice you heard on his podcast was a soundbite previously recorded from an interview I did with DJ Vlad three years ago regarding Suge Knight in 2009. Unfortunately, this isn't where the scandals end. Akon isn't the first celebrity to perform propaganda for dictators in order to line his pockets, and nor was Uganda his first time. In 2018, he joined rappers Ludacris, Young Jeezy, and Sean Kingston in performing for the 49th birthday of the spendthrift son and vice president of Equatorial Guinea's dictator, Teodoro Obie, Nguema Mpasogo, who has been in power since Akon was only six years old. Akon is also part of a broader ecosystem of celebrities and companies that choose money over morals. Jennifer Lopez has accepted millions of dollars to play private concerts for some of Central Asia's most corrupt and brutal figures, including Turkmenistan President Gurbanguly Berdi Mohamedow. In 2019, dozens of celebrities, including Janet Jackson, Liam Payne, 50 Cent, Future, Chris Brown, and Tyga, performed at a music festival in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, which was funded and authorized by the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who is one of the world's worst human rights violators. Akon seems to hold a widely prejudiced view of Ugandans, who he seems to argue are not capable of living in human liberty as he does. Akon's remarks are to Ugandans' courageous struggle to live free of tyranny. Holding Akon accountable for his comments is not an example of cancel culture. His remark was not off the cuff. Akon's explicit praise and endorsement of Museveni is worthy of international condemnation. Ugandans have the same right to freedom and democracy as Americans, Norwegians, Chileans, and South Africans. Akon's clear disregard for democracy in Uganda and support of a murderous regime is an unbearable affront to human dignity. Akon has had many legal issues mixed with government scandals that have caused the artist to fall short in many ways. His wrongdoings are still working themselves out in many cases, and we can only hope that he and others like him get on the right side of things or can make a positive difference from the ways they may think are correct and change the world for the better in letting it know the truth that it plainly isn't seeing.